Uh -huh. Well, let's bring in Jason and Ruha in here. Jason, uh, I think uh, maybe we can uh, talk about uh, uh, one of the things that uh, has to deal with uh, the foreign policy arena, and that would be how Iran's leader said that uh, Iran was very successful in defeating Daesh in the region, even though it's not completely been exterminated as of yet. And he attributed that more to the West and the fact that they are behind somewhat the creation of Daesh. Um, do you think that um, this obviously remains uh, a fight that has to continue, but uh, of course the motivations behind the West is quite different than what Iran uh, is doing, which is fighting them? Oh, I definitely do think so. The success of Iran when dealing with uh, it, Daesh uh, largely relies upon the fact that they're actually fighting Daesh. Uh, much of the so-called U.S. effort towards stopping ISIS has been really nothing more than a facade. It's, it's very clear that the United States is funding ISIS through its proxies in Israel and Saudi Arabia. It's interesting to note that every time the U.S. needs a reason to go somewhere, mysteriously Daesh just appears out of nowhere and grants that justification for heading into that area. Well, when you have somebody who puts forward an honest effort to try to stop the organization, as Iran has, as Russia has, then suddenly you see their numbers dwindling. You see them suddenly uh, losing battles for major territory inside uh, Syria, for example. And then when they do, they mysteriously find some kind of uh, uh, U.S. manufactured humanitarian corridor that allows ISIS fighters to escape one country and get into another. This has been uh, reported by uh, many Arab news organizations uh, many times of pointing this out, which has remained basically uncovered uh, whatsoever inside of much of the mainstream Western media. So they always have this, uh, uh, Daesh always has this magical ability to just teleport anywhere the U.S. needs a, a pretext or a justification to return troops true. We saw this with Iraq when some of the uh, U.S. soldiers were being pulled out of the country and Iraq began to orientate somewhat away from U.S. imperialism. Mysteriously, ISIS appeared and the U.S. had a new justification for suddenly wanting to move its troops back in. But what we saw... Uh, Daesh being largely defeated by the Iraqi military itself. It's amazing what can be accomplished in that arena when one actually wants to defeat the enemy and is not merely using it as a justification for further occupation. Uh, final uh, words to, to go to Jason and Ruheb. Uh, obviously, the focus uh, that Iran's leader has uh, uh, made on the economy, which has uh, uh, somewhat been the focus now for, for the past years, especially the resistance economy, was... Uh, uh, displayed through the motto, which is to support Iranian-made products. Uh, this domestic production emphasis, I'm, uh, I would think, uh, is so that uh, no matter what happens, for example, with the nuclear deal, when uh, the domestic capabilities are boosted and uh, are strong, that we can stand in uh, face of sanctions, for example, that uh, may be forthcoming uh, from uh, the U.S. Uh, in case they see it, since uh, you have a pretty erratic U.S. president. Well, I definitely think that there are going to be further sanctions. I think the JCPOA agreement will definitely be probably overturned by the United States to enact even a, a harsher deal in the future, merely with the, the sheer purpose of harming Iran. Uh, this idea of producing domestically and probably also consuming domestically as well is the correct course to take in the face of such sanctions and what is almost a guarantee greater sanctions coming in the future. In fact, this is this is a mistake that uh, Venezuela did make uh, when its sanctions began. It did not, because it had such a tremendous reliance upon the oil industry for its economy, it imported just about everything else. And the problem is that once you start having sanctions and stuff like this, you have a tremendous difficulties in getting hold of those products. Now, if Iran goes ahead and begins producing domestically, this creates a, an extra layer of protection against those sanctions that will definitely be placed against them in the future. And this is, it, it, it's really just a wise economic move to try to prepare for uh, what is most definitely uh, coming. I mean, the U.S. has made it very clear that regardless of what Iran does, regardless of what Iran says, regardless of what uh, what is certified by the other members of the agreement that Iran has completely lived up to its end of the agreement, that the U.S. is determined to try to overturn 
the agreement that was made only to place uh, harsher sanctions in the future. I think this is really, really just about hurting Iran even more. The sanctions that were placed on as a part of the agreement have not done the damage that perhaps uh, President Obama had wanted it to do. And Trump sees this as a possible opportunity to just place uh, more stringent ones on Iran to try to cause the damage that was not done the first time around. And this speaks very much to the intentions of the United States, that they could so openly lie about the, the, the JCPOA agreement in the face of everybody else who was a part of the agreement, knowing that it's not true. And it seems, and everyone's afraid to just call the U.S. president what he is, a blatant liar, to call the United States and its representatives in the U.N., like Nikki Haley, just outright pathological liars. This is all about hurting Iran, and the, frankly, this new orientation, uh, this new uh, a, a national motto, this yearly motto that's uh, being created to try to orientate the economy uh, more towards one that is perhaps less focused on uh, competition between Iranian companies, but more in a, a cooperative spirit, perhaps uh, more along an, an Islamic line, to try to fill the gaps that will be coming very soon. I mean, the, the, uh, I mean, he is certainly no fool. He he knows what's coming, and he has very good ideas on how to handle them. And I think basically any educated econ uh, uh, economist would agree with him. Thank you for that. Jason Aruha, political commentator there, talking to us from Ontario. And also thank you, Shabri Hassan Ali, activist and Islamic scholar who spoke to us from uh, Leicester there. Uh, we do appreciate your comments. And that brings us to an end for our look at uh, Iran's leader's statements on the first day of the new year here 